But I want to talk about this Yankees team uh, going into this trade deadline, especially if they kind of hover around this 500 point. To me, they go into a huge crossroads to build a team that could, you know, get into the wild card, make a run at the World Series. Do you reinforce this roster or do you start taking pieces apart here that you can maybe trade off, get some prospects and, you know, just admit that this team was flawed and, you know, they, they weren't the team to do it. And Nick, as a Yankees fan, I definitely want to know your opinion because I've heard both sides. I've heard the all the way on the extreme trade judge, trade him at the top. I've heard the other side go after you know, a big starting pitcher or, or, or a position player. So what's kind of, what are you thinking going into this trade deadline? I think it's really fascinating what this Yankees team can do here, or maybe they'll just stay put, which is kind of the Yankee way. <laughs> yeah. I could argue for both sides very easily. Um, you know, I, I, it's just been extremely frustrating seeing it is a bit of a privilege. Obviously the Yanks have been very good for the past few years, getting to the playoffs, but not reaching the world series uh, since, you know, this team has really been put together, the foundation, the core, um, that being said, you know, they, they, they've shown they have the potential to get there. Uh, it's just, they haven't. So I, I'm, I've been very iffy, very frustrated. You know, last, last season was hard to count in its entirety, you know, 60 game season guys not really playing in their entirety of, you know, getting in the groove per se. Um, but it was just very frustrating seeing the Yanks get knocked out that early by a race team that was much, much better. Um, yeah. but yeah, I could see I, I, this season is obviously not going how I think any Yankee fan or baseball fan has <laughs> predicted for these guys. Um, you know, if they were even six or seven games above right now instead of two or three, it would be a little more, you know, a little more confidence. I mean, I think I don't think there's a chance they catch the Red Sox. They're all the way up top, twenty games above five hundred. Also, the Yankees. Yankees can't win a game against the Red Sox as well. And they can't so. exactly. <laughs> We've been swept <laughs> twice, so it's it's yeah. just you know it's it's that's where it's that's those games those moments are when I want to say I'll oh, blow this up, get rid of it. Uh, a moment where I was at the Yankee game where Shohei Otani made his debut pitching in the Bronx. He gives up seven earned runs in the first inning. A bunch of rain delays. Five hours later, the Yankees end up losing the game eleven eight. So it's just those moments where I say, screw this, get rid of this team. But at the same time, you see last night, they scored 12 runs, 18 hits. Voight, MVP candidate last year, had a career-high five-hit game. Judge will always be there. LeMahieu is slow and steady, kind of starting to pick up. The pieces are there. They, they always have been. It's just they haven't been performing. So I, I want to keep it going for, for I, I want to say, one more year because, you know, if these guys do make a run to squeak their way into the wild-card spot, I mean, I don't think the AL East is remotely reasonable anymore. But if they can squeak their way into the wild card, anything can happen. Once you get in, you know, you win that wild card game, you go into series, and, and baseball always is about who's hot. And if the Yankees can finally get hot for the postseason, which they really have never been in the postseason, that could be their <laughs> difference. I, I, I want to see it happen. Do I have much faith? Not necessarily, but I, I'm, I'm kind of throwing the Hail Mary and hoping because if the team gets blown up, then you're looking at a lot of years of – mediocre baseball or potentially not so great baseball uh so i want to see it one more year i want to see them kind of finish this have a little pride of guts integrity and and get something going in the last half of the season yeah i mean like it's so interesting because like going into the year i was in the, the kind of the camp where this Yankee team didn't do enough in the offseason i thought they were good enough i didn't think they were you know this bad i mean I yeah. thought they were going to win the division. I thought, but you know, I didn't think they had enough to win the World Series. I didn't think they had enough pitching, and you know, you, you saw now the situation where you're two games over 500. You didn't hit your expectations so far, and it's you know, I would try to maybe add a piece here. And I know that I think the division I agree is out of reach, but the wild card and just the way it's set up, you know, if you can win that game, you're hoping Cole kind of returns to some semblance yeah. of his ace status. And if he can go win you a wild card game, then you're talking about, you know, a playoff series. And as you said, anyone who gets hot, if you bring in a pitcher that, you know, could be that two to Cole, and we don't know what, what's going to happen with Kluber and his health, you know, Severino, like all these question marks. So you bring in another guy, maybe you don't bring in anyone that's like a stud. Um, maybe you do, maybe you go out, get a Jose Barrios from the twins and, you know, you, you trade some assets and, you know, you get a player, you know, whoever it may be to put you over that 
just, oh, we're a 500 baseball team. Oh, let's, you know, because like in 2015, the Mets were, oh, we were a 500 baseball team. They had you want to assess, but it's, yes, that's a once in, you know, a generation run that he had where he hit 18 home runs in 40 games. But you never know until, you know, you pull the trigger and you make the deal. Now, the Yankees and Cashman, they're not really apt to make those big deadline splashes. And obviously you have to give to get. But, you know, you can see something at the Yankees go out, make a deal that lights a spark under a guy like you were saying, DJ LeMayu, is, is he going to become a 330 hitter again? Because if he is, you have Judge, you know, all-star, he's at, you know, definitely at the top of his game. You're hoping maybe Stan hits one of his runs. To me, it's such an interesting, you know, dynamic because as bad as this or inconsistent as this Yankees team has been, there's so much talent. That, that's like when I was watching him this weekend, this is really the first time I sat down and watched the Yankees. Obviously, it was against the Mets. But I was like, why is this talent? They've sold the line of so deep. Why aren't they coming through? And maybe they just need a piece, whether it be a lineup piece, whether it be starting pitching to just light a fire under them. I don't know if that would do anything, but I don't know. I feel like this team to blow it up, I, I would do one or the other. I would either go out, trade everybody or trade some pieces or go out, get a player and say, you know, we're serious about this. We're not one foot in, one foot out. Yeah, they they, they need... I was going to say needed. I don't know why, but they need a, a spark. Uh, it's it's just it, I don't know really necessarily who I liked the name Cattell Marte from the Diamondbacks. Mm-hmm. He's one of their only shining points, really. Yeah. Um, but then we went out and got Tim LaCastro, who is a kind of a bench bat at, at most. Uh, you know, it's I, I've said this before. As much as I love, absolutely love Brett Gardner, longest tenured Yankee. Uh, I went to his first game. He, my first baseball game was his first game. As much as I love <laughs> that guy, I, I don't think he should be a starter anymore. He, he's, he's 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 not a old. starter on a playoff team. You know exactly. It's that simple. It's, it's, it's I, I nothing against him. He had a great lineup. career with the Yankees, but yeah. I mean the guy's what thirty seven. I think thirty seven. He's I not think. a starter on a on a playoff team. Exactly. And go out and get I a love, center fielder. I love the guy, but he should not be playing center field for us anymore. It, those days, I, I thought they were over a couple years ago. They weren't, and he had a couple other pretty solid seasons he put together. Yeah. But now, no, it's just not not a playoff team. Has 37-year-old Brett Gardner starting. Someone exactly. should be there in that place. I know there's been some injury issues. Aaron Hicks is supposed to be there. But even Hicks was having a mediocre season uh, thus far. His signing is, is controversial as well. He had a lot, he got a lot of money from the Yanks. Uh, I don't love Miguel Andujar in left field. I think he looks scared, not Really, uh, in the moment, if you watch him field a fly ball, he kind of looks childish out there, taking steps back, taking steps in. Uh, but it, yeah, you're they got to make some sort of move to to find a spark. It's just the question is who can you move without blowing it up? I know it's kind of picky, but that would be my ideal scenario. Exactly. It's get yeah. someone, provide a little fire to get going. The question is who goes then? Maybe I don't know Clint Frazier. I don't know what his value is anymore. It used to be high. Mm. I don't think it's high anymore. But it's tough. That's what the GMs are for. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, my, my guy has always been Charlie Black into this Yankees team, and we'll see uh, yeah. where, where the Rockies are. But I, I think he'd be a, you know, professional, at, professional, you know, guy that could take at bats. And that's just so important to lengthen the lineup out. Maybe I don't think it'll cost that much. And maybe you can go out and then get a pitcher and maybe have two moves. But it'll be interesting to see what the Yankees do. But 